Have you ever opened DaVinci Resolve, dropped in your drone footage, and then stared at the screen completely lost? Yeah, that happens. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to go from a blank project to a completely finished edit you can actually share. Now, you don't need a $500 course to do this. All you need is DaVinci Resolve and about 20 minutes. Let me prove it step by step. So first, you need to download DaVinci Resolve. So go to their website and download that. And it installs like any other program. So I won't go over that in this video. But once you've downloaded and installed it, let's get started. Now, the first thing we're going to go and grab is a LUT. A LUT is basically a preset that transforms the footage from the log profile into something that looks closer to what it would have been in real life. You know the process to getting your LUT. You can go to, if you're flying with DJI, their website has a section that has all the LUTs, but you can also download a version from the internet. People make LUTs all the time. So now we can open Resolve. We're going to click on New Project, and we're going to name our project. Then hit Create. So if you've done it correctly, your project should look something like this. So the first page that you normally be on would be the cut page. And to find the pages, just look at the bottom of the screen. We're not going to use the cut page too much because a lot of the things that we can do in the cut page, we can also do in the edit page. If you go back down to the this page, this is the cut page, like we mentioned. The one to the left of it is the media pool. So if you're handling a lot of footage, this is where you go to analyze and organize them. The one after that is the edit page. So if you look at the edit page, you'll see at the top of the screen, you'll see a tab called media pool. So if I click that, it pops up this, this section here. So the way DaVinci Resolve is organized is into panels where each tool has its own panel. So inside the edit page, there's already a media pool. So that's why if you're not handling a lot of footage, you don't really have to go into the media pool page itself. There's also this panel already opened. This one is your effects and you can click up here to turn that off. You also have over here, this panel, which says nothing to inspect. This is called your inspector. So whenever you're handling any assets in the Venture Resolve, there's going to be an inspector somewhere. In the middle of the screen, you have this gray area and this black uh, rectangle. So this rectangle is your viewer. So you can, depending on how big your screen is, it may make sense for you, but you can have single viewer or double viewer mode. This bottom section here is the timeline. So there's, you can make it bigger or smaller by hovering over this black line. So that shrinks the viewer at the top and it makes the timeline bigger. The next page is the fusion page. This is where you can do special effects, the next one over is the color page. We will be going into this one when it's time to color grade the video. The next one over is called Fairlight. That's where you do any extensive audio processing. And then this fast, this last one that looks like a rocket ship, this is your deliver page. This is where you export your video. So let's jump back over to the edit page. Now, before we get started in Resolve, we want to go to this bottom corner right here and click the cog. That's going to open up our project settings. So first is the timeline resolution. If you shot in 4K on your drone, which you should have, or if your drone has even more resolution than that, maybe five or 6K, this is where you would set it to whatever resolution that you shot in. These can stay the same. The timeline frame rate, we shot in 30 frames per second. So we'll leave that there as well as the playback frame rate, 30 frames per second. So now the next setting that we'll go to is our color management. Now, because we're doing color grading and because we also shot in log profile, we want to change these. So this one, if it's already on DaVinci YRGB, then you're good to go. For our timeline color space, we're going to go with DaVinci WG slash intermediate. And then for our output color space, we're going to go with Rec 709 Gamma 
down below, you'll see this button called Open LUT Folder. Now, when you click on that, it will open this folder here. I'll drag it across. Now, this is the this is the folder that's inside of DaVinci where all the LUTs are stored. So remember, we just got our LUT from the internet, so you may have to go to your downloads folder. I already have mine, so I'm gonna grab it and drag it across. And I'm looking for the DJI folder right here, and I'm gonna drop it in there. And we can close that. Then you can click update list, and you should be good to go. That's our project settings. We're gonna click save. Now we're gonna import the footage and the music. So I have my folder here with my drone footage. So I'm just gonna drag them and copy them into, drag them right onto the timeline. So because we shot in 30 frames per second and the timeline is already in 30 frames per second, I'm just gonna click don't change. And now it's loaded my, my clips into the timeline. We have the videos are above the gray line and the audio is below the gray line. Let's take a look, quick look at them just so we get an idea of what we're working with. So to play, this is one shortcut that is very useful. It's just a space bar. Now, if you notice the video looks washed out, that's because our LUT has not been applied yet. We're still looking at the log footage. Now this red line with the kind of triangle shape at the top, this is your playhead. And as you can see, as it moves across the video, it, is, um, it plays the video. So if we wanted to look back at something, we can click the playhead and drag it right back to the beginning or drag it to any point in the video that we want. We'll just scan through the videos just to see, remember those three questions we asked? What's the establishing shot? What's your medium shot? And what's your top down shot? So let's see if you can find those. So now that we have those, I'll just put them in quick order just to kind of get ourselves organized a little bit. So taking a look at this, do we like this as an establishing shot? What do you think? Yeah, don't be scared, you can tell me. Let's use this one. So I just clicked on it and I dragged it up. So what just happened is it made a second track. You'd notice if I have this video now on track two, above track one, if I carry my playhead over right here and I press play, take a look at what happens. So I'm currently seeing this video, that top down shot, and then it switched to the establishing shot. So what you're seeing is the topmost track at any given point in time. So that's just something to bear in mind if you're trying to work on some footage and you're not seeing it, there may be a clip above it that's blocking your view. So now I'm going to find a medium shot. The first thing I'm noticing is the villas. So this is a good shot to go into next. Once you've done those, then, if you remember at the beginning, we had the top down shot of the villas. Now we can throw that there. These are the order of our first couple shots. We have the establishing shot, the push in, which gets us close to the villas, then a detail uh, right to left movement, and then a top down. So let's work with that. But since we, we're good with the order of the clips now, I'll just click and drag like this. So once you see the red outline, that means the clips are selected. I will drag it down back into track one. So now we have a general order of how the footage will be played. But you can notice the, the clips are a bit long. And also there's the moments in the beginning where the joint is still being positioned correctly like that before the actual move starts. So we'll want to trim the clips. 
So in order to do that, let's get some music in first. So I'm going to go back to my folder. And I'm going to grab this super cool song. And I just click and I drag it into the timeline and automatically it'll go on to the audio track. So we can take a listen to the song. All right, so that song is just about a minute long. Now, for our first video, that's way too long. So we're gonna wanna trim this track down a bit. Instead of starting it from the beginning, let's see if we can find a point closer to the end where we can make that the beginning of the song. So let's listen to this piece. I think that sounds like a good spot. So let me try and find Let's try and find where we want it to cut it. So I want to focus in on this timeline and get this a little, oh sorry, not the timeline, but this audio clip and get a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna click detail zoom, but now this is way too big. I can't really see, like this is way too much to try and focus on. I need something in between. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this minus sign here and that gets me out a little bit. And I can even drag this ball, this circle, until I get a nice sized timeline. So now I can see a little bit more clearly what I'm working with. So now we're looking for the point where we want to start the song. So I'm gonna make this track a little bit bigger so I can isolate those waves. And I'll pull this up and pull this down. There we go. So let's see if we can find it now. I think it's right there. Okay. So now we we have the point where we're going to be the that's going to be the new start for our song. What I'm going to do is click on this this little razor blade looking tool, and I'm going to come right over the playhead. I'm going to click once. I'm going to go back and click the regular cursor. So what that did is it cut the clip. If you do want a shortcut, because this is a pretty common thing to do, it would be Command B on Mac. Sorry. So now let's listen to this piece. Nice. So we get the same feeling of the song, but now we don't have the entire song for the full minute. So we'll take this first part and press delete on the keyboard. And then I'll click on this one and I'll drag it to the beginning. So now we have to fit these six clips into this audio. All right, that's the challenge. So let's take a look at it. So I'm just gonna play. And I'm gonna look for the point where right about here, I see that the drone is stable and the speed is stable. I'm gonna come to the beginning of the clip and you see my pointer, it changes to this shape. A triangle with a line, with a rectangle behind of it. Now I'm just hovering over it, and then it can also change to this shape. 
with two lines with two triangles. So I'm looking for this shape. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag. I'm going to drag it all the way to the playhead. And if you notice, when I get close, it kind of just snaps to the playhead. So that's a feature called right here, snapping. And it's a beautiful clip very nice but the clip has taken up the entire length of the song so we need to find the ending point for it so for now we'll do some rough cuts so let's turn back on the, the track we'll also turn down the music the volume over here just a bit and let's see where's a good point so we're listening to the music now to try and figure out where's a point that we can cut. All right, so let's, I like that. I think for our first video, that's solid. We won't use this. I mean, this is a okay shot. And yeah, we'll stick with this. This is good. So you see how at the end we kind of fade out. Let's let's add a little spice. Let's add a little spice. So when the song fades out, as the song fades out, we'll also fade out the clip. So right about here. So what you're going to look for is hover your mouse on the clip and look for this little white, I don't know what you call that, uh, whatever that little white thing is. And then you're going to drag it, click it and drag it over to, let's start with the playhead is and see how that feels. But what this is going to do, it's going to take your clip and lower the opacity slowly until it's completely black. It's called a fade out. You can also do it at the beginning of your clip. And that's called a fade in. So you can go from completely black to the clip or the clip to completely black. Let's see how this piece feels. That's nice. So we do have a bit of silence at the end of this song. So let's take that out. And then we'll add back in that uh, fade out. Let's see how that sounds. That's nice. That's nice. Do we want it to do it at the beginning? What do you think? Anybody ever tell you don't really say much? Okay. Let's see how it feels. Let's go a little bit more. That's nice. That's nice. All right, so let's see what the whole video looks like. Now our footage fits the music. Beautiful. But there's a little bit more we can do with it. Between editing and the final product, there's still a lot of work to get a professional looking video. In the next video, I'll show you the color grading workflow that turns your clips cinematic. If you want the full step-by-step -step process from start to finish, where I explain my thought process in more detail and even explain some of the tools in more detail, check out the longer version of this video. I'll put the link in the description.